Hey photographers, it's cold in Canada, so as we sit in our lonely log cabin on the 13th floor of YouTube headquarters, we think about Sergeant Renfrew and his faithful dog, Cuddles. And while the good sergeant would always, often, frequently, well from time to time he would get his man, but he probably would not get Sony's menu system. And you don't need me to tell you that Sony's menu system is less than optimal. That's conventional wisdom. Nor do you need me to tell you that Sony's features are pretty much at the leading edge of photography technology. And I accept that increased feature sets, advanced capabilities, and extensive customization will lead to complexity. Now, when I reviewed the A9 a few months ago, I thought the menu system was improving, but as I ranted in my RX10 IV review a few weeks ago, I'm frustrated by the lack of organization and coordination, which means that the technology leadership Sony brings is overwhelmed. Well, now the A7R Mark III. Sony reset the menu system when they launched the NEX series. This is the continued evolution, so they've certainly had enough time to improve it. And not counting sub-pages, like the custom key pages or the HDMI settings, the RX10 IV has 37 screens with 165 settings, 171 with My Menu. On the Mark III, 181 settings plus My Menu. That's clearly a lot to organize, but it seems as if organization has been given only the most minimal attention. And I'm not going to complain. I have some suggestions, too. Now, first of all, the color categorization. It isn't pretty or useful. And there's room for seven tabs across the top, so that's a wasted opportunity. And the illuminated squares at the bottom of the screen, they're distracting duplication. They're less useful than the screen numbers in the top right, which are the same. My suggestion? Eliminate the redundant squares. Move the overloaded HDMI sub-panel from Setup 3 to a seventh tab. The RX10 IV and the A7R III have touch screens, which would make it so much easier to jump to another tab. Instead, it's scroll up or down until the tab is highlighted and then left or right. The navigation model dictates that when you get to the bottom of the first screen, quality, pressing down again wraps to the top instead of going on to the next screen. In my usability model, you'd only get to the top by scrolling up and scrolling down takes you to the top entry of the next screen. And going up from the tab shouldn't take you to the bottom of the page. That's clearly not an anticipated or desired outcome. Now, before I continue with my advice, first, a few examples of the current dreadful organization demonstrated on the RX10 IV. Now, say, for instance, you'd like to understand the focus features. The switch on the front of the RX10 IV has five settings probably one more than is needed. I'd combine manual and dynamic manual. Then, here are all the focus settings, starting on tab one, screens five and six, and already the items are not in a logical order. The ones related to area setting and selection are interspersed with controls like AF with shutter, that I'd be in a hurry to move with the other control features on tab two. Then, functions that should be combined are given individual positions, like register and delete AF area. Then, after a five screen break, focus settings continue on screens 12 and 13, which features focus ring rotate. Although I recognize that the word focus appears here, this should also be with the other physical control settings. So that, for example, it's with tab two screen nine's lens ring setup. After all, that's focus two but I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, the final screen of the first 14 is face detection. Ugh. I'd lose no time in putting it on the screen five with other focus settings where it belongs. Face detection is a focus setting. Now that's been remedied on the A7R III with the slightly ambiguous new menu option on screen six. Set face party in AF when on face detection is enabled. Then face frame disp which enables display of the face detection square. The A7R III has four screens of focus settings, then skips four to continue with a single screen. Face detect registration is found in quarantine on screen 14. 
And clearly, no one knew what to do with auto object framing on the RX-10 IV, so it's abandoned here. I'm not sure where it belongs, but I'd put it with quality and size on screen too. Not available on the A7R 3 Now, if you want to control the touch focus, that's on the Setup tab screen too. And related items should be on the same page. Touch operation shouldn't be on Setup 2 and the remainder on 3. Would it be easy to move Demo Mode to Setup 2 so they'd be together? But since there's a sub-menu for touchpad, why not aggregate all the touch settings to the sub-menu? I'd accept that video focus settings could have their own screen. A few have been left on tab 2, screen 2, but I'd find them easier to locate if they were with the others. And why are these video only? Are they not equally useful for continuous burst still modes? But if that's confusing, stabilization is worse. Screen 3 has steady shot for video. Screen 5, after the movie settings, is steady shot for stills without the options. Let's get these together on the same screen. No such confusion on the A7R 3 There's only one setting. I guess it works for both. Well, although most do, there are items that don't indicate their setting. So for example, the currently selected movie file format and record setting are displayed. Why not HFR? Why not the audio record level? I also have a huge level of discontent with the exclusions. Why not provide the full stabilization suite in 4K? And I get that it would require a better processor, so would be happy even if it was only available on top-of-the-line models, like the RX-10 IV. So, let's turn to movie mode. Quality is not available, and the error message says program mode. Much louder than the movie icon, which is confusing. Let's just say video mode, and unless you're in panorama, you can't adjust the panorama settings. Why not? Unless you're in movie mode, you can't set the audio level. Why not? None of the other settings are disabled. Let's back up for a minute to organize the capabilities, features, and settings. In my world, camera settings are organized into six large buckets. Exposure, which includes metering and monitoring features like Zebra, as well as settings related to dynamic range. Focus, which includes peaking, and because it kind of fits, stabilization. Color, including white balance and most effects, drive modes, and in my world that includes bracket, intervalometer settings, and panorama, video, and control customizations, changing what the buttons and dials do, both at the micro and macro level. And there are two kinds of controls, one to turn things on and off, and you see here where a new screen has to load to change from one state to the other. Why? Wouldn't it be better just to toggle from off to on when I press OK while it's highlighted? And the other kind of control provides a selection. Again, two categories. One where you need to see the image so you can see the change that you're making. A second where you don't. All menu settings suffer from a lack of assistance. Sometimes it would be helpful for the message to say which mode it is available in instead of which it's not. And why do some settings just have a plain menu switch, while others, like center lock on autofocus, never mind. So it is worth mentioning that menu items which would benefit from an interactive screen take you back to the scene to preview the setting. Now, if only the meter and histogram didn't disappear as soon as you adjust the ISO. Most dimmed out options have some explanation. Not sure what disabled finder monitor, and am I the only one to wonder why this is in all caps? No. Provides an error message that doesn't explain. It could just say that an external monitor is connected, which is what the problem is here. Now, there's a lot that Sony gets right. For example, the function menu here on the A7R 3 Highlight focus area, and the front dial selects area. The rear dial selects options, like flexible point size. But wait! Press the center and the display changes. But the dials work the same way, only now you can also use the joystick. That's all good, powerful, and flexible. 
I hate error messages, and I blame them on lazy programmers, indifferent project managers, and careless product managers. Fix it so that an error message is not required. Now, if a feature is not available, here are my rules. Dim it out. Hiding it or skipping over it are not acceptable. When highlighted, a message appears that says why it's not available in clear language and offers a one-click solution to change. So, when effects don't work with RAW, the pop-up explains and says press to disable RAW and enable effects. So, Sony's not all bad. There's good. For the custom key selections, this used to be an unending scrolling list. Now, you can page from one screen to the next with an organization that mimics the menu. And that smart thinking hasn't yet migrated to the function menu selection pages. And the movie button shutter select is on screen three, while the movie button's control is with the other custom key settings. I could go on, but that's enough for today. Sony, I love your cameras, but honestly, your menus could use some work. Hire a user experience engineer or a usability analyst. I know some people. That's it for now. Make questions relevant, comment civil, Use the fields below. I do reply to all. There are options to like and subscribe. Now keep shooting until your battery is empty and your memory card is full. While I figure out this menu.